Hey everybody, it's Karen from Waterfall Acrylics. Welcome back, how are you? Um, tonight I'm doing a pour, um, it's a commission um, for a repeat customer. Um, a gentleman in India uh, has asked for a third painting, so it's really kind of cool, right? And so I am making him um, a painting on a 16 by 20 staple back canvas. I didn't bother taping because I'm gonna pull the staples at the very end you know, once it's cured, I'm going to put a spray varnish on it and then roll it up and put it in a tube and mail it off to him so I don't have to worry so much about the back tonight. Um, let me uh, get you down. Well, actually, I'm going to move this out of the way and just chat with you while I layer colors. Let me show you the colors. So that'll be my work area right there. Um, colors tonight. I'm just going to line them all up in the order I'm going to use them. So I have a cup of the Artist Flow, um, Artist Life Flow Acrylic in white. Can you see that there? Yeah, right, barely. White. I have some Master's Touch Vermilion. I have some Artist Loft Naples Yellow. I have some Artist Loft Aqua Green. I have some Windsor Newton. What's this? Burnt Umber. Uh, yeah, Burnt Sienna, sorry, Burnt Sienna. And then Liquitex Basics, the Philocyan Blue. I will mark that on the on the video. So those are the colors. Oh, I had them in order, now I messed it up. So I'm gonna just do white, yellow, the orange, green, Sienna Blue. All right, like that, a little U shape. Uh, pouring medium recipe tonight, um, I did 60-30-10, so 60% water um, in my thing. What was that? Did I make 24 ounces? Yeah. So it was like 12 ounces of Elmer's glue wall, 6 ounces of water, and I'm trying to kill off the um, Vallejo gloss fluid pouring medium, so 4 ounces of that. And it's so funny. I'm just going to start layering colors or get my cups out. I might do five just to have a spare for something else. And then um, the consistency, PM to paint is 50-50. Uh, um, just a little bit of water um, for consistency. So a little bit on the thicker side. Tonight, there's my trace in the cup. You can see it leaves a little bit of a trace. By trace, I mean the mound in there. Nice and creamy though. Has some nice body to it. So pretty happy with the mix. I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, two drops of my treadmill silicone in the colors. and give that a good, good stir. So when I was thinking of my, um, when I was mixing my pouring medium earlier, I was like, I have to use the Vallejo because I got to kill it off. Like, I can't throw it away, I got to use it. Which, and I don't like it very much, yet I continue to use it. And which is so ridiculous because, you know, earlier today I had a burrito that wasn't all that great and I ate maybe three quarters of it and threw the other third away. And I have no qualms of throwing that away. Like no big deal, right? I don't like it. Off it goes. Didn't give it a second thought at all. Yet here I have this pouring medium and I only have about a third of you know, look, that's all I have left. There was a little more because, you know, I used a couple ounces, but I don't dare throw that away. Oh, no. Which is so silly. And part of it is because I'm a penny pincher in real life. Um, never buy, never pay anything full price art supply wise. But I was like, that's so ridiculous how some things, like, you have to use it to the very last drop. 
or you have to recycle it, but yet food, no qualms, which is like all kinds of wrong, really, if you think about it. Did I stir this up? Oh well, off I went, off I go. So the client picked these colors based on a, um, an old posting he saw on Instagram. And so if these colors look familiar to you. It's because I used them, I think twice now. Um, I know I did last summer in New York. I think I made two paintings with these colors. So I had to go back and find the video and figure it all out again. I had a lot more colors, so this time I just uh, called it down to like the five primary colors that I needed. And it's similar to the colors I used for, um, I think my first sandwich pour too. My house is uh, really quiet because both my husband and my daughter are doing whatever they're doing, wearing headphones. So, like I'm the loudest one right now. I think I just wanna stir this up a little more. All right. So, I think I told you guys, um, or I was kind of cryptic about it, I was mentioning how I taught in an art studio, and most of it was great, but there's always that troublesome student, um, one who was drinking, and I kind of took the high road and didn't talk about it. I did hear from the studio owner and I expressed my concerns and the response I got back was not what I was expecting in that she felt that in the future, in future classes, that student could be managed. And I knew right then and there, I'm like, oh, Karen's out because I'm just not having that kind of nonsense in a class I teach. That kind of boggled my mind too. Because I don't know. I guess if I was the owner of a studio, an art studio, I would not want that kind of liability. But not my call. Mm -hmm. I don't think I even need a second pass at these colors. Putting on the layers rather thick. That's all the colors. Gonna try to some white on. Maybe a thin. Yeah, ease up on the white. You don't need that much white. Uh, a thin pass. I decided to do all the little cups, like more little cups than a fewer big cups, because um, I wanted to be a little more linear. And I am going to do my traditional flip and drag, which I haven't done in a while, right? So, for those of you that like this, this method, here you go. Let me see. I'm going to start over real quick. Nah, what did I start with? The yellow. Just a quick little layer this time, not so thick. Just a little bit.
just a little dollop in each. And that leaves me enough paint for a small one. And then, what was that, the orange? Just a little bit of the orange. bit of that left. A little wiggle. How many of you are, are uh, neat painters? Like I love it when I'm really super neat. I do not like a mess. And when I watch other people's videos, I have, will admit I am turned off if their workspace is super, super messy, which is like totally biased, I know. I can't help it. I just, it's a messy, uh, messy hobby, but like to be neat which um, by the way might not work out so well my next video I'm going to try um, another wave wave with the hair dryer like my splash uh, painting and I'm gonna use my mallet I'm gonna practice first I don't know how it's gonna work out in my kitchen but uh I'm gonna give it a go. When my husband's out of the house. <laughs> and not around to see the mess. Oh, I got a story for you too. Real quick too. And if this person is watching, I don't care. I'm calling you out. So I get a lot of private messages on Instagram. I mean, a lot. And usually it's people that want to know something about, something, you know, painting related, which is fine, you know. I'll either answer their questions if I can or direct them to my YouTube channel or whatever, you know, my Etsy page, whatever the case may be. And this one gentleman contacted me and he's like hi I'm like hi he's like, how are you fine and I'm like I'm waiting for like the art question and instead I got what do you do and where do you live and so I ignored the first part and just said I'm like uh oh where's this going that's the first thing I thought. Where's this conversation going? Like, why are you asking me this? Strange person that I've never, you know, never known in my entire life. So I just said, I live in, in Virginia. And he said, I live in, I don't, I can't remember now, Idaho, Iowa, one of the I states. And uh, got a spare cup here. Um, oh yeah, wait, let me make sure you guys can see the whole canvas. Sorry. <laughs> Here we go. And, uh, he said something else. Like, tell me about yourself or something. So, I was honest and said... I'm married with a 12 year old daughter. And this, his response back to me was, well, I'm really not into having an affair. And I was like, what? Like, you contacted me. I wasn't asking to have an affair with you. 
And then he went on and on about like, you know, he's been down that road before, blah, 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 blah. But life is good now. And I was kind of like, okay, thanks for sharing. It was just really, really bizarre. And then I had another friend tell me, um, we both play um, the Words with Friends game, you know, the app. And uh, my little icon picture um, on that game is a picture of me and my husband at a wedding. And my girlfriend just had a picture of her face. And she gets hit on all the time. Like people will, you know, because you can just play random strangers. And they will strike up conversations with her. And so she finally took down her picture. I'm like, put up a picture of you and your husband. It just like negates that whole thing. So, I don't know. Just my, my uh, you know, musings on a Saturday night about social media. All right, let's hope we get something pretty for my client. Let me uh, scoot this up just to give myself a little more room. See if I can move you back a little. That's, oh, how come I'm gonna fall off the edge here? I think that's the edge of the canvas too. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, ready? Gosh, I haven't done it one in a while. Like, do I know how to do them still? I think I do. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. And oh, some on the corners. Hey, I remember what to do. What are you talking about? I'll just put it on the corner. All right, number one. That looks pretty. Number two, all the way down. Mm. Leave that in my cup. I might use that fifth one, we'll see. Scooch this over a little. I'd rather have too much than too little. Oh, I ran that one all the way down. One, two, three. Yep, I'm gonna use the fifth. I can tell. Oh, I did a terrible job. You should've moved over, Karen. What are you doing, goober? Well, let me have him go meet up now. Can I get away with four? I might be able to get away with four. Let me see. I'm gonna put this one on the edge. All the way. Let me see how it goes. For a second. I'm gonna tilt just a little bit before I torch. Um, just to see if I have enough for coverage. I should. Let me uh, go over this way, get everything to meet up. Go there, all the way. Yeah, let's just see if we can get a uh, coverage in the main body and then I'll worry about the edges. Uh, a little more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, we have enough paint. And come back. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna torch at the end. And come down here. Get this one corner. Go down slow. back just 
I don't like the white on this end. I might try and get rid of that too. Let's be greedy. Get rid of it. Yep, bye. Okay. Come back. Look at the cells. Look at that line of cells. It's like if you would have torched us, we would have been caterpillars. We had to make it ourselves. Get rid of that. A little bit of green over there. Hold on. Yeah, all the way. A little olive thing there. Like I'm covered everywhere. Looking good. Let's take off some off the bottom. Get on this little edge. Stare at it a second. I um. I see. I see caterpillars waiting to happen. I'm telling you. I'm so paranoid. Totally. Totally paranoid about caterpillars. let my paint rest so it really don't have any um, bubbles. See? I mean, even if I go across the paint, it makes caterpillars up and down. Figured I would just torch it all up. It helps negate the caterpillars a little bit. I'm trying to stretch some of them out. staring at my uh, other cup, right? You know what I do when I hate something. Let me look at it a second. Like, if just this part from me, from here to me, if that was everywhere, I'd be thrilled. Like, this bottom part closest to me is gorgeous. Gorgeous.
it's interesting because like all the um, all the orange and yellow are down here and all the green and blue are up there. I'm just waiting a minute to see if things grow. They move. I think I can stretch it out a little bit and maybe pour off at your end without stretching out the cells too, too much because there's like a bend that's gonna bother me. I don't mind like this or like the lines, that's fine, but it just curves off right there. And I just don't like that. I don't like it when it does that. So I'm gonna go try and go straight. And if I end up stretching it, you know, all to hell, I'm gonna dump that other cup of paint on it. But first, let's see if I can just save this by straightening it, it out a little bit. And maybe in the process, stretch out some of the caterpillars. Then they won't bother me so much. Actually, some of them aren't bad. Like there's like two right here that are so stacked that they're actually kind of cool. Same with this guy here. So I was able to straighten it out a little bit. And get like more of this into the middle of the painting. Let me go a little farther with this and see how much I can move my cells without getting them all wonky. I think I'll lose a little bit of paint there. there. Actually, it's kind of growing on me. The um, tilting off there like um, opened up this whole area here and separated all the cells, so that's good. I like my clusters down here because they're just really, really pretty. Um, so that's cool. I just, you know, I want it to be really nice for this guy. So I feel like I'm putting extra, extra pressure on myself. I want to see if I can get something here in this little white spot and maybe in here. He likes cells. So let me, um, let me try that. Here's my bigger torch too. Or it might be done. Oh no, there they go. How about in here? Oh yeah, just make more caterpillars. Sure, why not? That didn't really add anything to anything. made a cell that looks like that dog from Toy Story, you know, with this with the um, spring in the middle. It's got like a head and then a spring and then the tail. That's kind of hilarious. I forgot that dog's name. Uh, somebody tell me his name in the comments. The dog from Toy Story. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's fine. I'm not going to dump paint on this. It's it's not that it's not as uh, horrible as I initially worried about. Um, it's kind of growing on me, actually. Yep, calling it done. Chida, et voila, c'est fini. Let me put some of this orange. Oh, my new favorite thing to do is take color from the bottom of the canvas because then it matches up really nicely right there. All right, let me get you guys down. You guys can take a um, close look. Tell me what you think. The colors are really, really vibrant. Um, I actually um, like the orientation where it's uh, landscape instead of portrait. 
but I mean, it's gonna get rolled up. He can hang it any way he wants, once he gets it. So, let me get you down. Very, very vivid tonight for some reason. So, there's the top portion. You got these clusters over here in the orange land. Like these cells, these um, caterpillars here. I think I forgot really to stir some of my cups. That's so like, I think it's totally like my bad tonight. Cause remember I was saying, did I stir this? And I bet you I didn't stir all the paints. So that, that, that's what happens when you stir. But I love this and I love like this here. And I do like how it just merges into the, uh, the green and blue section with the um, orange background. And then this is the fav my favorite part down here is these blue cells down here on the corner. Those are fantastic. That's cool. So, and then I like how it merges into the, uh, the sienna into the uh, aqua green too. We come up high. Yeah, I hope he likes it. I'll send him a picture, so, phew. Yeah, so next time, uh, more fun with the hair dryer and making waves with the mallet. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, just had a, I wanted to get this done for him. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Take care. Bye bye.